Hi guys. Well, I just um, I just left the uh, Emotiva, and um, I just stopped at McDonald's to get some um, something to drink and something to eat. Uh, since I'm gluten allergy, dude, all I can eat is French fries. But I need something. So I have now spent two hours at Emotiva. What a blast I had. Oh my lord. It was so fun and they were so good. Talk about customer service. Oh my lord. They have three buildings over there. And um, the first building that I went to was the wrong one. It was where the engineers and the owners and um, all the top brass sitting is sitting. And he told me, hey, you gotta go next door to our next building. And they have three buildings. Uh, so I went to the next building and um, registered, um, and they gave me a tour. Um, and we went into several areas and stuff, and um, they were really, really nice people. Grayson was a top-notch dude. Um, they, they gave me some stuff. Look at this. A tote bag. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. And they filled that one up with... Uh, well, he gave me his business card because I asked for it because it was, he was so good. So, um, I got his business card. And then they gave me a catalog. Uh, and, of course, we were listening to stuff and we were talking. And, I mean, two hours. Come on. That's really good. And let's see what else he put in there. I don't know what he put in there. Oh. A coffee mug. Wake up your ears. Emotiva and a t-shirt a black t-shirt saying something let's have <laughs> let's have fun again I can't do this but let's have fun again with the Emotiva logo and then of course there's something on the back also um, I'll, I'll show it to you better. I'll put it on when I make a video later on. Um, that's it. But you know what? I'm cool with it. Shit, they gave me some stuff. And they gave me a tour. And we talked. And we talked about possibly uh, Rousey Audio becoming a dealer for them in Memphis down the line. And, um, oh my God, their products are... I always said, Emotiva is really good. But I never heard, you know, a lot of them. I heard one amp here and one amp there. I have to be so honest and say I never heard their speakers, but I heard their speakers today and oh my lord, is it good. Their mid-ranges are like to die for. Um, so uh, I am going to have a quick lunch now and I'm going to head over to Gibson uh, and see if Gibson wants to <laughs> give me a tour. I don't have high hopes about that at all, but uh, because I've heard some, na some, some bad stuff about how they treat people who show up at the factory unannounced. And let me tell you, I showed up at Emotiva unannounced. I did not call them or to say that I was coming or anything like that. So um, they just said, come on in. Come on in. What a, what a, what a great company. So I'm going to eat a little bit now. And then I'm going to go to Gibson. And I'm about... Um, According to my GPS, I'm about half an hour away. So um, I'll make some updates later on. See you later. Hi guys. Back in my store after a um, little road trip yesterday. Well, the day before and yesterday. Um, I was in Nashville and uh, I'm coming to you now making this video. Um, there, there will be two videos from that trip. One about my um, little head office factory tour at Emotiva. They gave me some some goodies, a t-shirt, um, gave me a little bag, and of course I got the, the catalog and some some business cards, and I also got um, a coffee mug. Wake up your ears. <laughs> uh, so that was cool of them. Um, 
I had a great trip there. Um, spent about two hours at Emotiva. Um, they have um, three buildings beside each other. And one building is for uh, mainly research and development and the admin office and the owners probably and the CEO and stuff like that. And by accident, I went into that building first and he just told me very friendly, hey, you need to go and register at the, the next building because that's where the visitor thing is. So I went to the next building, the middle building, and um, that's when it started. And then I went to a tour in the two next buildings because I didn't need to go into the office or area. So uh, <clears throat> building number one that I went into um, was like where customer service and customer relations work, sales, and stuff like that and they also have a warehouse there and there was a home theater demo room in the back there and uh, the, the last building had um, some production and engineering and a hi-fi setup demo room so um, it was really cool um, I have heard Emotiva before um, I haven't heard all their products I heard some of them and the, the, the ones that I have heard in the past has been very good. I have only heard their amps. I have never heard their CD players. Uh, so I've heard like preamp and amp. Some, some of them, not, not all, but some of them. And um, I, I've never heard their CD player or, or like looked at it and, and stuff like that. I have never heard their speakers before. So, um, I had a chance now to hear everything. Uh, and I, I heard it as a home theater based setup and a hi fi setup. And um, I tell you, uh, the things that I have already said about Emotiva in the past, I'm not going away from that. I still believe that they are extremely extremely good for a extremely good price compared to other brands and here is why the sound quality that comes from Emotiva CD players preamps processors amplifiers are very very good it, it is very good and it can rival the sound quality of way more expensive equipment um, power wise they have everything they need in 8 ohm and 4 ohm I would probably not go in 2 ohm or closer to 2 ohm load on them because they are rated for 4 and 8 ohm and um, so that's where they have their strength um, I started out when I was there by listening to their 9.2 uh, setup they had a uh, you will see some pictures here that have been edited into this video, but they had a 9.2 home theater setup, and um, based on their T2 Plus series speakers, their center, their 15-inch subwoofers, they had four of them, and a mighty huge screen um, that they're not selling, but they had a mighty huge screen to go with the sound system, so the experience was really really good, and of course they had their home theater based amplifier set up with the uh, processors and the amplifiers and all that stuff uh, as you can see in the pictures that are being edited in here um, I was very impressed with um, the, the home theater setup it had clarity it had power and uh, it had a full range when I see a full range a full fret frequency range nothing was missing there was no dips or points where i could say oh it lacks this or that because in a home theater it is very easy to overdo certain aspects and then get a little dip or a hole in other places it is very easy to overpower uh, if you not with amplifier power but you build up bass and you build up the side systems uh, so it's very easy to overpower your center if you do it uh, the wrong way. Um, 
this was very very balanced but very correct and i tell you they had the four 15 inch subwoofers that they had there was doing their job fantastically well um the stuff the, the subwoofers are built up with an active not not power but a regular driver that you feed up with an amplifier and it's down firing and then they have a, another 15 inch in the front that is passive radiator so you have two 15s in a one cabinet um so it 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 had a lot of bass uh, it sure did uh, can i compare it to the setup that i had many many years ago no not on bass but it was for sure way more clear way more detailed than what i had because i used pro audio amplifiers and pro audio speakers and i just went all out because we wanted loud and and bass and we wanted to shock and so this was more like a more balanced system but it can play loud it played loud it had a good bass the center was following perfectly along and uh, they had done some uh, speaker configuration with their atmos speakers up in the ceiling as a very cool satellite effect even though they had back speakers as well so overall the home feeder um, sound demo that i had was spot on i really liked it really liked it so we moved on from there and we walked around a little bit and we talked and then we went over to the next building and uh, where they had their hi-fi set up and um, we went to the listening room and they had the T1 Plus there and the T2 Plus there. And they had a, a 10 inch subwoofer in there. Uh, same configuration on that 10 inch. Uh, down firing that you power with your amplifier. And then an active, uh, you know, a passive radiator in the front. That one was never in use during the demo because we didn't need it. Um, and then they had their, their more expensive lineup of gear in that room as you can see in this video um i <laughs> i kind of got a little bit torn when i listened to it because i didn't know what to expect but i had heard they used those t2 plus in the home theater as well and i told the guy um that did the tour with me that i really liked the mid and the, the and, and how the mid and the, the high frequency work together and they use ribbon tweeters in the speakers and i tell you the mid and the tweeter in these speakers the tito plus excellent excellent um they really hit the nail on the head with that tweeter and that mid-range so when i walked in there i was a little bit torn because i have always thought that home theater and two channel hi-fi is very separate so how can a speaker be good for both when there's when they, were, they were really good for home theater and then i was like so we're going to listen to that as hi-fi as well um i was kind of like a little bit on the fence when i when we sat down and um i was thinking like most home theater speakers that i have heard in the past have been very good in home theater but kind of lacked a little bit in the hi-fi um, aspect of it but it all it took was to put on a CD and, and start playing and all my doubts was gone. Uh, oh my lord, they were even better for hi-fi use. And once again, the mid, I mean the mid-range in these T2 Plus are just excellent. They reproduce the music so clear with so much detail and they almost like you feel that the person that is singing is right there in the room. And the ribbon treater is such a perfect match for that mid-range. And they have nailed it on the crossover points and how these two interact with each other. And of course, the woofers that are in the T2 Plus is just really good. They're not big, but they give a good bass. Um, don't get me wrong, they're not like Sir and Vega, brutal bass. But for the size and for the design, of the speaker they give good bass so they're a good hi-fi speaker and I he put in uh, I think the CD was already in there and they started playing and 
Diana Krall came on. And I am not a big jazz fan or a big Diana Krall fan. And I always said that people who listen to, <laughs> to Diana Krall um, are more or less are listening to their sound system instead of listening to music because it, Diana Krall is up 80% voice and not 20% instruments. But I am, um, as a demo, to showcase what that mid range can do, uh, Diana Krall was a perfect choice to start off with because it gave me that confirmation what can these speakers do as a hi fi speaker. And I tell you, that mid range is just freaking awesome. I loved the reproduction of the music that came from those mid ranges. And with a ribbon tweeter like they have, and it's like seamless interaction with the, with the mids, the sound was very, very high. Um, I mean, I have heard way more expensive speakers that didn't, doesn't even come close to this. <clears throat> and that, that says a lot. So we then took that off and we put on another uh, song. I don't know which artist it was, but it was a really good song. Had a little bit more tempo, a little bit more rock elements into it, guitars, um, a little bit more drums, uh, snare drums, um, a little bit more bass. And it was kind of like a a style of music that is in the, um, I want to say in the Genesis and maybe Dire Straits area of things. So, um, it, it, and it, they just kept improving and, and, and impressing me more and more. Because I listened to more to like the type of music of rock, hard rock and metal um, and a little bit of blues. But so when they changed the song from Diana Crawl to this, it was more up my alley. And I was like, this is getting better. How do they do on hard rock and metal? And he said, I don't know if we have hard rock and metal CDs here. And we started going through the CD thing and he, they had some, some other CDs that they had burned themselves. And I said, just put down something that what you think is good. And um, he found a, a Michael Jackson CD from the uh, Bad Album. Um, it was a few songs that they have burned or recorded and um, then you get more like a poppy tempo, a little bit more synth, a little bit more uh, what I call artificial bass drums from a drum machine and stuff like that. So you get a little bit more, you know, a little bit, a way more ba bass as well. And that's when I, I started to, to see and hear that. Damn, these little these little woofers really can do the job when it comes to reproducing bass. Once again, not Saren Vega, 15 inch, boom, boom, bang, you know. Very good bass, very tight, very... And when it would need to go low, it went low. Um, and of course, this T2 Plus was powered with a 550 watt amplifier in 8 ohm. So the headroom was there. Uh, I mean... We, he turned it up to like what would have been probably 10 o'clock or 10 30 or maybe 11 o'clock and it was loud it was clear and good punch uh, and the speakers didn't complain the amplifier sure didn't complain um, and then uh, we listened to a couple of michael jackson songs and uh, i was really impressed because when i do some tests here or test when I test stuff, yeah, I use Michael Jackson. I listen to Michael Jackson every now and then. Um, he has some cool songs, and you could really, really get in depth of what a system can do because Michael Jackson productions have always been top notch. Uh, uh, two of his uh, albums, Dangerous is One, uh, was recorded and produced by Bruce Sweden, uh, where they used Electro Company amplifiers as their main amplifier for um, feedback and testing and grand listening and, and recording and all that stuff so michael jackson recordings are very high quality recordings so you when you use that in a test you you can get good feedback from the speakers on how good they are 
So after we had done that, he put on another CD, and without him knowing it, there was a two or three songs with Rush. And then we're talking about progressive, uh, hard rock, and, and more up my alley. And then I really started to sit down and listen really good, because this was music that I know how I've, I've heard it before, how I like it. Tell, uh, let me tell you, these, this setup with the amplifiers, the preamp, the CD player, and the T2, T2 Plus speakers, <laughs> they surprised me again. Once again, I, I heard songs that I knew and how I want them, and it sounded so good. It sounded so freaking good. And then we went down from there and we listened to a few other songs that I'm not sure who the artist was, but... Um, and the whole thing, through the, through the first song to the last, I have to say that this was a killer setup and a killer sound. Uh, I really like those T2 Plus speakers. They are now being modified a little bit. They're getting a facelift. So the ones that are on the market now will be phased out, he said. Um, because they have this cutout on the front. Um, they will be gone, so it will be like more like a slim, slight, straight face cover. Um, so so a little bit of a facelift is coming to them. But they, they wouldn't change too much, they said. But a facelift is coming on them. But I like the T2 Plus. The T1 Plus sounds good as well, but they don't have the same body or the mass or the, the, the force behind the music as the T2 because the T2 is bigger, but they sound just as nice and good. But if you go for the T1 Plus, you probably want to have a little subwoofer to go along with it. The T2 Plus, on the other hand, they can find, be fine by themselves. They can be used by themselves, standalone, no problem. If you want to integrate a uh, subwoofer, no problem. Now, their more expensive line. Let me let me get the catalog here. Um, they have several series, and um, you have the. Um, X series and uh, base X series let me find the one that is um, you know the X series has the XPA and then you have the X series Atmos um, and a lot of these amps are modular so you put model modules into them um, and that's how you can build it up the way you want. Now, at the end of the, the session and the end of the tour, we went to go and take a look at the... Um, I don't know if you can see it, but the Basex series. And this is the their entry line of uh, amplifier technology. And I tell you, the Basex... You get some really, really good amplifiers, good pre uh, preamps, and um, CD players. The CD player was on its way out, so they wouldn't sell that one anymore in the basics. But the amplifiers, and you can get them at two channel, five, uh, three, three channel, five channel, um, and even an eight channel Sony amp. Um, and you get process processors. And uh, the thing here with the basics is. You get the emotiva quality and the, the sound quality, but to a price that is so good. I mean, they have that two two channel amplifier with 150 watt per channel in eight ohm, 300 watt per channel in four ohm, and I think he said that the uh, the retail price is somewhere. I think it was somewhere between 499 and 529 or 549 or something like that. So right around 500 bucks can you get. 150 watt per channel, two channel amplifier. Or if you have certain mega speakers with four ohm load, then it will give you 300 watt per channel. So if you think about it, you get a brand new amplifier, cool looks, good build quality, fair amount of power for 500 bucks. That's in many cases what you pay for used stuff that is like 10, 15, 
20, 25, 30 years old. And you don't know what kind of condition they are in when you get them. Yeah, they might be work. You go and buy a used one, any brand, any type of amplifier. And you go and listen to it and it works. But it still is 10, 15, 20, 25 years old. You never know when something's going to happen. And of course, you never know. You never know how it's been used in the past, how many owners it had, uh, have there been any repairs in the past, stuff like that, unless you open it up and you dissect it really well. Here you can go and get a brand new amp, 150 watt per channel in four, in, in eight, and 300 watt per channel in, in four. Brand new with a warranty and everything for 500 bucks. To me, that was like just a shocking good deal. And when we listened to it, they drove speakers like no problem. It was really good. And um, so the product itself is like, wow, they're good. And um, I want to take a couple of minutes now to talk about. Um, so, so let's step be said. Conclusion, conclusion, conclusion is you don't need to fear buying an Emotiva amplifier processor speaker cd player if you have it in your budget to buy those products for god's sake do it it is good now i want to take a couple of minutes to talk about the company and how i was treated because this will be kind of like the mirror opposite and the total opposite of what i experienced later on in the day this was a day of two tales. One is how it should be done and how it should not be done. There will be another video about that because I went to two places, three places. I was greeted in a way that made me feel welcome. It made me feel that you are a potential customer either as an end user or a dealer. <clears throat> Clearly, it didn't matter which one it was, but I was a potential customer and they treated me really good. From the first interaction I had with an older gentleman in the admin office, very nice. He had four little dogs come and greet me, barking and yapping, and I petted them and he's like, oh, they're not that dangerous and all that. Very light, pleasant, polite mood and tone. I felt welcome. When I went to the other building and I signed in, I went to the reception, very nice, very courteous, very welcoming. Um, and Grayson, who guided me around all day, his name was um, Grayson Harper. Thank you. Very nice guy. Um, very pleasant tone once again, very open and, and welcoming. Uh, the atmosphere in the buildings were nice it was clean it was very typical of what you would expect from a company like this it was setups and but not like overdone in a way it was like it could easily be every day joe's living room for that matter it wasn't like we are a high-end company and we are better than everyone else and you know they didn't have that approach as being better and and we have to use $20,000 cables and stuff. You know, they didn't have that, that audiophile bullshitness about them. They had that straightforward, honest approach. We love music. We love making gear. We love to make the best possible sounding gear that we can for this amount of money. And we're offering it to you. And you're welcome to us. We will greet you with open arms. And here you go. So the company itself was really good. They have drilled down this customer care service so good. And if this is how they treat their dealers and customers on everyday basis, then then I understand why they have had so much success in the last 15, 16 years that they have been on the market. I think they said 15 years ago they started. So, um, you know, if this is how they run their company, uh, then, then they're... <laughs> really good and it's so totally different from what i experienced later in the day um so um i mean i had a pleasant trip uh it was fun 
And when I went there, I went there unannounced. I didn't call them, I didn't email them, I didn't message them or anything like that. I just showed up. And there was no hassle, no hassle. It was like so nice. And how many places can you go to like that without them going like, oh, we are busy today, we don't have the time. Um, and they could find all kinds of excuses not to drag you around in their facility. You know, it, that would be the easy way to do it. But here some stranger comes and knock on the door, or walk in the door and they're like, yeah, well, come in. Hey, go over there and sign in and register and we will take you for a tour. You know, not many places will do that. Certain Vega back in the day was like that. You could go to the factory in Simi Valley and, and get that, that experience and that treatment. <clears throat> I have heard that JBL was the same way. If you went to JBL in Nor Northridge, California, you were taken good care of. And I mean, they hooked me up with stuff. They didn't need to give me anything. I would have been happy if they didn't. I, I, I was happy with the tour, but for them to give me t-shirts, coffee cups, and a bag, a brochure, and he gave me his credit, uh, credit card, uh, his, his business card, and said, if you need anything, just let us know. We talked about setting up maybe a, a dealership for Rossi Audio here in Memphis. The tone was totally positive towards that. You know, that's the kind of thing that you want to experience. Not only as a dealer, but as a customer. If you have a, you know, because all products and all companies will at some point have some flaws or some problems and you need maybe some repairs and warranty things. It doesn't matter who you are. Krell, Macintosh, even the, the, the most expensive amplifier in the world, if it costs a million dollars, will at some point need some service or maybe something goes wrong. So, if this is how they treat their pe customers before, during, after a sale, you know, then kudos to them. It is all perfect. I could not be more happy and uh, I hope that I, in the near future, can get a lot of stuff cleaned up around here. I want to clear out my whole vintage audio section over here. And hopefully I can do that whole thing with Emotiva products. And if I can get the back area too, I might even set up a Emotiva home theater thing uh, mixed in with some of my custom stuff uh, for home theater. So, um, <laughs> wait for it. There's another video coming right after this one that I'm going to make. And that's about the other company that I went to when I was in Nashville. And let me tell you, not impressed. I was not impressed. I also went to, I would say this, I went to Gruen Guitars. That's a shop in Nashville. Top notch. Great stuff. But there's another company because when I, when things happened with the second company, I went from there to Gruen and that saved the day. So uh, stay tuned for the second video, okay?